Welcome to Hangar 49 here in Berlin, where I'm with Union Black. Uh, first of all, guys, you're a very fresh band, so uh, first of all, tell me how this project began. This uh, project began uh, 10 years ago in my head, uh, where I just had this idea of a sort of crazy two-piece power band. Um, but I was playing a lot around the Europe with Jeffera, and then I had various other projects going on, and it kind of just stayed there. And uh, it was this constant idea about duality and all these um, concepts that I'm kind of fascinated with. And then uh, I ended up in Berlin. Jevera went on hiatus for because of babies and becoming middle-aged, I guess, nearly, <laughs> or already. <laughs> and uh, I sort of went crazy, did the refuge, and then I thought, okay, this idea I had before, it would be really cool. Um, I saw the disintegration of uh, my birthland, and that gave me the idea for the name. And there, yeah, there, there we are, and I was looking for a drummer for seven months. Finally found one, and yeah, the, the, the Union Black is there. Okay, and what kind of music? It's inspired by being a rock and roll band, um, but without a particular genre. And so it's doing two things. On the one hand, I wanted something where I could just rock out and tell a story and be pure emotion. Uh, but on the other hand, I also wanted it to still be art. It kind of bores me that you have to be one or the other. It's just like, you know, meaningless noise or it's really shoegazy stuff. So it's something in between. And I uh, also wanted to take in the influences. I live in the dance capital of the world. This is a sort of crazy, energetic, fun place. And I w I've been listening to a lot of that music and I wanted a bit of that influence. You know, the loops, uh, the fact that it's a two-piece, uh, a lot of playing with the repetition and subtle changes. And I want a band where you can, f you know, wallow in the sound or you can dance or you can move or be moved. Yeah. Okay, and uh, why did you choose to do mostly instrumental music? And is there ever going to be more lyrical songs? So, um, again, it comes out of this duality thing I've been obsessed with, yin, yang, um, and so on. So, actually, I was grappling when I first started with this band. I didn't know whether it was going to be instrumental or not. At first, it had vocals and everything. Then uh, I realized when I played the demos without the song, without the lyrics and without these sort of early demos which were not finished i actually enjoyed them more sometimes and i i did an experiment where i played it to somebody one of the tracks and i played it with vocals and without and wanted to know what they heard what they thought and it was quite different so i was like oh so annoying that i have to choose and I have to rush to do the lyrics then i realized i don't have to this could be two bands so the navajo project is actually two bands in one so the union black is this first more instrumental version and then Navajo will be the one more with vocals. There's no sort of date, but that will, I guess, be more like a traditional like band you'd expect uh, to feel, because when you put the lyrics and vocals on, it feels quite different. Um, but the idea is to keep the music more or less the same. I mean, none of my ideas ever end up exactly as I first imagined, but that's the plan. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, still waiting for the lyrics. And, uh, well, despite uh, Union Black being instrumental. Is there a message behind this band? Uh, well, there's definitely a message, but again, it's art. So it's not so much a direct message. It's an interplay between what you hear and what you feel. I have included some of my spoken word pieces because I'm a spoken word artist, and I'm using that across all my uh, different projects, which kind of is the bonding glue. And so sometimes it's quite explicit what you're thinking about, but other times I think it's, it's fun for us to be, as musicians, a little bit more open. And we give you a, a platform to start what you're going to, you know, draw the details out of. And the message is, well, maybe it's on the T-shirt, you know, a little bit of skepticism. Don't believe everything you think. Think for yourself. Uh, be original. Have fun. Uh, where I, I think there's definitely a sort of a, an anti-authoritarian vibe to it. Uh, but not in a cliche sense, not really into isms, into, you know, a broader kind of artistic freedom. Yeah. Okay, uh, as said, uh, you are a fresh band, so how is it for new bands at the moment? For example, here in Berlin, a city attacked by gentrification at the moment. 
uh, gentry thick dish. <laughs> uh, Berlin, I mean, I'm a Berlin cliche. You know, I came here for three months because my friend was like, hey, just come for a bit before you move to where you're going. And I'm still here three years later. So there's something about it which is artistically helpful. It's, it's beautiful that it's still, despite the gentrification, just about livable for artists, just about usable. But um, it is getting harder and it, is, it has some other aspects. It's a little bit cliquey and it's a little bit... Uh, you know, it's a bit, maybe it's, it's saturated, you know? It's like Hollywood, you know? You order a pizza and you get a pizza and somebody's script, or, you know, they're, they're, they're acting real. And here it's like, hey, I'm in a band. Oh yeah, join the queue of everyone. So, yeah, there's this and this. But uh, I find it nurturing and useful, and it's where we are, so it's home. All right then, yeah, you are playing tonight here in Hangar. 49, so what kind of live band are you? We're going to find kind out. Of experience, <laughs> what kind of experience should it be well, for I, the listener? I think the answer is we're all going to find out what kind of band we are. Uh, this is a Berlin debut. So actually, m what I said to Robin before is it takes about 20 live gigs to find out what a band is. This is gig number five, like the first in Berlin. So we're still learning who the fuck we are. Uh, you know, it's... Um, it, you can have a million rehearsals, but when you play live, it's completely different. Now, finally, the music is contacting people who've never had it. One of the shows we played, we were surprised which song, how it connected. You know, it was just one of the songs. And of course, we enjoy our songs. We like making them. But some we realized just weren't doing it. And then some were just hitting and we were feeling and the people were feeling in a completely different way. So live is 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 what a band and actually maybe i should have said that before that's what a rock band should be about and we'll find out what kind of band we are by playing live okay uh in addition to those gigs uh what are your plans for this year kicking ass <laughs> anything more specific what's the grand plan for union Black? the grand plan is uh try and get up to those 20 gigs or we'll try and play some festivals uh we don't have any connections, contacts. We hate social media. We think it's antisocial, but we realize it's needed. So we're going to have to see what we can do from the ground. We want to build the band up. Um, I've been playing in bands for a lot of time, so I don't have any more of those weird naiveties. It's really about creative freedom and being real. We don't want to compromise our music, but I think we've learned a few things that there is an audience if we can find it. Okay, thank you so much, and uh, break a leg tonight. Um, we've actually specifically been trying not to break our legs, but we know what you mean. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>